What's going on you guys? My name is Jay Fritz and in today's video we're going to be talking about the Canon RF 70 to 200 millimeter f2.8 lens. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel because my next video will be a follow-up to this one where I talk a lot more about my hands-on experience showcasing some of my favorite footage and photos that I've taken on this lens. In this video we'll be covering the camera lenses ergonomics and general specifications. Without further delay let's get into the video. Let's start off with the lens ergonomics. Like all of Canon's lineup of L-series lenses, you get the typical dust and weather sealing in this lens as well, which is super nifty, especially if you're taking your lens out into rugged conditions where there's rain, snow, it's super, super nifty, and it's definitely something that I need in all of my lenses. For what this lens is, it really is a compact design, especially once you take off the lens hood, it's pretty dang small. This lens is only 5.75 inches at its minimal form. It then comes in at 3.54 inches in width. Not only is this lens extremely compact, but it's fairly lightweight for its design as well, coming in at only 2.64 pounds. And if you remove the tripod mount, you can bring it down to 2.36 pounds. Along the frame of the lens, you'll find a number of different switches to control your stabilization, your autofocus, as well as your focus distance. And last but not least, you have another switch that allows you to lock the position of the lens so that it doesn't accidentally zoom out or zoom in on you. And one thing that's important to note is that the lens only locks at 70 millimeters. So you can't zoom in to 100 millimeters, try to lock it. It simply won't budge. So once you go back to 70 millimeters, you can lock it in place. That way your lens is not accidentally zooming out while you're on the move. What's unique about this lens is it comes with three different stabilization modes. This is really nifty depending on the style of photography or video that you're doing. The first mode allows you extra stabilization on all axes. So for general purpose, that's probably the mode that you're gonna wanna stick to. The second mode is designed to help you with panning objects. So if you're focusing on a subject that's in a car or a boat or something that's moving at a pretty flat plane, you're gonna be able to track them parallel very easily. Last, we have mode number three. Mode three is primarily for objects that are really shaky or moving around pretty chaotically. So if you have a bird in flight, something that's fluttering around all over the place, that's the mode that you're gonna wanna use. It really helps you to lock onto those things while still maintaining a stable look. At the tip of our lens, we have a 77 millimeter filter thread. So if you're throwing on any polarizers, ND filters, creative filters, or just protection filters like what I have on here, that's the size that you're gonna look for. Just like the rest of Canon's L-series lenses, the 7200 also features a control ring right towards the base of the lens. This is really nifty if you want to custom assign a certain feature to that function so that when you roll it, it changes that feature. For me, I have it assigned to my focus mode so that I can switch from face tracking to just general subject tracking autofocus. In the box, you'll also receive your lens hood. Now it's pretty bulky, but it serves its purpose as blocking sun from hitting the lens directly so that you can avoid nasty flares, but it also helps to protect you against certain weather conditions like rain or snow, and also bumping the end of your lens on objects. And trust me, it has saved me loads already, especially when I'm trekking around in the hills or in the trees. It clicks right on to the end of your lens, and there's a little button release when you want to remove it. Just like that, super easy, super fast. Another common feature you'll find on most 70 to 200 millimeter lenses is the tripod mount. Now I personally don't use this setup on a tripod very often, but it has come in really nifty when I want to attach it to my camera bag strap so that when I'm carrying around two cameras, I can just lock this one on and it's on my chest right there at all times. If you prefer to not use the tripod mount, all you have to do is just unscrew it with the knob, pull, and just like that, it's removed. Another nifty feature to the tripod mount is that with this little knob, once you loosen it, you can rotate your camera from shooting horizontally to vertically really easily. And they have little markers to let you know when you hit 90 degree angles on all four sides of the lens. As I mentioned earlier, this is the f2.8 version of this lens. They also have an f4 if you're looking to save a little bit of money on your purchase. For me personally, since I am shooting in low light conditions and I like to have that extra sharpness in my lens, 
I decided to go with the f2.8 version and I don't regret it one bit at all. One thing to note too, this is actually a lens that I acquired through the company that I work for. So it's not my personal, but I do have it and I'm using it all the time. So that's where I get my hands-on experience. And I would definitely purchase one of these for my kit if I did not already have access to one. Your minimum focal distance with this lens is 2.3 feet, which is killer considering that you can get all the way out to 200 millimeters on this lens and still only be 2.3 feet from your subject. I was able to use this to my advantage on one of my shoots when a dragonfly had rested on some brush literally just a couple of feet from me. I was able to pull up the camera, get super close, and get some really uptight detail shots on the bug, which is pretty sick. One last feature that is good to note about this lens is that it is designed for full-frame cameras, so you're not going to have any issues running it on a camera like the Canon R5. As I previously mentioned, this lens does have in-lens stabilization up to five stops, which is fantastic, especially if you're planning on shooting any sort of close distance wildlife photography or any action sports with a moving subject. I've worked with a number of lenses that have stabilization built into the lens itself. And honestly, I've been blown away at the 70 to 200. It is so still even all the way out at 200 millimeters, especially paired with a body like the Canon R5 that already has image stabilization built into the camera itself. I cannot say this enough. This has become my favorite lens because of just how sharp this lens is, but also just how soft the bokeh is and the separation when you're shooting a subject, honestly anywhere from between 70 to 200 millimeters. I'll showcase a number of situations where that separation and bokeh comes into play in my next video, but I'll show you just a couple of teaser clips to give you an idea of just how soft the background is when you're using this lens. It's super cinematic, but it also creates a really high-end professional look if you are shooting professional photography or video. The colors are fantastic coming out of this lens. Another great thing is I don't really notice too much vignetting or chromatic aberration, so that's also a plus. To pick up the RF 70-200mm f2.8 lens right now in the United States, it costs you right around $2,600. For most people, I would say that this lens makes sense if you're making some money from photography or videography, or if you're a full-time professional, then I would say this is absolutely worth every penny. All right, you guys, so that pretty much does it for the specifications on the Canon RF 70-200 f2.8 lens. And again, I will be putting out another video next week where I jump a lot more into real world scenarios from actual professional shoots that I've done while utilizing this lens, both for photo and for video. So if you're interested in that, please subscribe to the channel, stay tuned, comment below what your favorite feature is about this lens, or if you're considering another option, which one you're considering. And with that said, you guys, we're gonna wrap up this video. We'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.